Uh, my name is Ville Freeman. I work in the University of York as a reader and I run my lab be interested in phage therapy in sort of medical and agricultural context. So we're here at the poster area at the DMS Congress. Uh, it's a little bit after lunch and I have with me um, Ville from uh, the University of York as we said and I'm gonna ask him a few questions about his session and how he is finding the conference so far. So can you introduce your session, tell us a little bit about what you what you said? This session was more about sort of clinical microbiology in the sort of cystic fibrosis context where you have problem of persistent bacterial infections and then it's a genetic disorder with humans and then you have sort of you can basically get rid of the bacteria normally what you would do are uh, coughing and then, and then this leads to problems bacteria becoming quite resistant to antibiotics and then and they it's a nice example of how bacteria evolve within our bodies quite quickly as well my sort of uh, kind of part in this session was to speak a little about my research, which involves bacteriophages that are uh, bac basically viral parasites of the pathogenic bacteria mm -hmm. in this case. And I'm kind of interested in if you can use them therapeutically to eradicate some of the antibiotic resistant bacteria. Mm -hmm. And doing lots of work in, in sort of model communities in the lab, uh, but then trying to do also some get into the sort of human patients level experiments to see how well they work and if it's really feasible strategy mm -hmm. in the future. So you, you mentioned uh, in your talk that you were trying to develop an evolutionary proof of phage therapies, right? Yeah. So this is a case where, you know, we have susceptible bacteria and then you apply the phage therapy and then it, they become resistant. So how is the research going on that? It's been going quite well. So there's a few few PhD students working on that project. We're also working on a sort of collaborative, um, uh, a larger BBSSC funded project now with the researcher from Manchester and Exeter. We'll be looking uh, sort of more on the mechanisms of resistance. So, so what I was discussing more about was sort of receptor based or receptor mediated uh, resistance where, where some of the uh, structures, bacteria and gold uh, act as a receptors like pilus or LPS or flagella and an easy way to evolve resistance is just kind of get rid of those structures so you have mutations and mutants that can escape phages that way but we're now interested in also sort of post-infection defense systems so bacteria has these sort of defense islands and phage defense systems where they can recognize incoming DNA and, and, and maybe splice it up or then commit to sort of a positive uh, suicide where they basically kill themselves when they get infected by bacteriophage. So we're kind of looking more into that sort of mechanisms. And I have a few, few students working in my lab, and I'm working with Helle as well, who is a researcher here in the Riggs Hospital, and I'm on DTU. And I'm, she's been working on these organoid sort of um, tissue models or, or small organ, organ mm -hmm. models, and we're interested in applying phages in this context to mm -hmm. see how, how deeply in tissues they can penetrate and if they really would work in this sort of semi-natural system. And I think you had a slide on uh, cholestin resistance and it was quite quick. So did you actually encounter any cases of cholestin? Because we know that it's the last resort antibiotic, right? Yeah, so I think with the cholestin, we've done sequencing of the, of the clones and, and I think there's some link with the LPS mutations rendering bacteria resistant to the phage, so LPS modifications. Uh, but also have a uh, sort of sensitizing effect, making the bacteria more susceptible to cholestin. So, so I think that was a, it was a more of a long shot. We just wanted, to, we knew that what are the sort of potential uh, resistant mechanisms against the phages that we want to just explore if there's any link with antibiotics. And we tested quite a few, but cholestin is one which is interesting and, 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 and crucial for the uh, treatment of the CF patients. So. I just kind of highlighted that result yeah, yeah. In, in the in the in the poster. And you said you you worked on um, 
pseudomonas, uh, pseudomonas aeruginosa infections, yeah. right? Do, have you ever worked with other um, bacteria or do we expect kind of to see the same behavior? Yeah, so actually like other half of my lab, we're, we're working on plant pathogenic bacteria. And, and this is something I, I ventured maybe five or six years ago because I can realize that if, you, if you're interested in human pathogenic bacteria and phages, it's quite hard to find a study system where you would be able to study these in sort of in vivo setting. So agriculture, we're kind of facing the same sort of problems that we don't have chemicals we can use to constrain bacterial infections. And food security is a big issue in the future. So we've been focusing on plant pathogenic bacteria and using phages to keep the plants healthy. Mm -hmm. And then you can then grow, grow your tomato plants or Arabidopsis plants in your greenhouses and, and, and then apply phages just along uh, irrigation water. And it seems to be working quite well. So we're kind of interested in similar kind of ecological and evolutionary rules or, or patterns we could use to develop that sort of therapy more efficient. Yeah, it's quite interesting how, you know, broad your research is on phage therapies. Um, but then um, what's next on what are you looking to do next on your research? Are you focusing on an area specifically? So we've been with the plant, uh, plant pathogen perspective, we've been isolating lots of different phages and, and we're developing combination and testing them in a greenhouse. Uh, there we're kind of moving towards getting uh, in people from industry um, interested in and, and aiming to go big retailers in food industry in the UK. So, and, and we're working with companies as well and industries that are developing fates, um, therapeutics for the plants and, and, and sort of a food security context. So, so the idea is to just try to see if we can take this further from our sort of lab investigation into some, some reality. And then, and then with, the, with the clinical side of things, with pseudomonas, uh, we're interested in maybe translating the findings we have now with the organoid model, with the Helle, Helle here uh, at Copenhagen, and see if they, mm -hmm. if they work in tissues. And then there's so many, you know, what we can see in the test tube might not hold in, in real life. There's so many ways it could go wrong when you have spatial differentiation, you're interacting with human cells and then an immune system. So I think it's really important to build that uh, gap, that bridge by building these steps and I'm going towards more, mm -hmm. more sort of real, real setting. Yeah, it's very, it's very interesting, I guess, yeah, to it, see the more on the in vivo or, or industrial, how can, how can you build this in a mass, more massive scale, commercialize something like that? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, there's, there's lots of multiple issues there. Commercialize and scale up things is, is not easy. And also just changing the context into more natural, you lose the sort of control you might have in the lab. And so like how you yeah. how in how you can convince someone to take the phage therapy when it's actually on the let's say hypothetically on the market. Because we know okay, antibiotics, people are largely okay with mm -hmm. having them, but then vaccines. Vaccines <laughs> maybe, but then phage therapy is quite an unknown. I think it's going to be taking longer time to get it, sort of as a as a drug, and then how there's a lots of issues there with IP as well, and then um, how how can you kind of make profit and um, if you can patent anything, uh, in in reality if you use uh, living phages, I think we can be more, we can make more progress in agricultural side of things where you can apply. They you are worried about that you don't cause any sort of environmental harm or that you don't have any sort of phage residues in your produce. But, but it's going to be much easier to get it through there. And then phages are using as a sort of preservatives in some of the context. Um, when you're packing, for example, raw fish uh, to keep listeria away. Mm -hmm. And then in the UK as well, they're using sort of phage wash is used to treat potatoes when they are packed to keep them basically stay better looking and, oh. and, and you can increase the shell life of a product by adding okay. the phages on the surfaces. Nice, I wasn't aware of any of those applications. Yeah, no, wow. there's a big, big, big retailers and supermarkets are actually using this product. Okay, interesting. Yeah. So I guess for the last question, non sciencey question, how are you finding the Congress so far? Is this your first in-person conference for a while? 
it is so we've had some some sort of departmental meetings at York uh, with, with with the whole department and on presentation and and I'm, so I've been mingling with people previously, but but it is the first sort of international conference for two years. It's, it's exciting, but at the same time, it's like it's a bit boring, and then you you also feel you're a bit rusty how how you're supposed to behave and how you're supposed to act with people. So, but but, but it's overall it's, it's it's very nice, and then it's it's nice to present your data and also communicate with people in person. So so it's it's more sort of natural way of interacting and, and exchanging ideas mm -hmm. and discussions. Yeah, I would like to wish you best of luck with the rest of the Congress because we have another half of the day almost uh, of networking for you yeah. so far. So yeah, best of luck with everything and thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you for the interview.